Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversation. One destination for it all. E360 TV. Now I know when something happens in our lives that is unexpected, you, you go, you have to go into it in order to ever have any hope of coming through it. So when you go, guess what? When you come out the other side, you grow. brought out more in me than I thought that I, I didn't even know that I had. That has given all of us a great hope for what we can do with our own messages, our abilities to deliver, but most importantly, to deliver it in an authentic and very, very intriguing way. Have you ever been in something or felt something where the only way you felt you could deal with it was to leave, get away? I thought that was the meaning of control. It took me four and a half years to stop looking around the room of my life, of my journey, of my purpose, digging in cushions for a remote that never existed. Looking, relooking, going back and upgrading, bringing in and pulling out things that do not serve you must go. Those things out in this world that are designed to bring us down, to keep us down, put their foot on our neck and whisper to us that we're never good enough, they don't whisper. They yell at us from all directions, top to bottom, bottom to top, side to side, side to side, corner to corner, corner to corner, 365 days. When somebody asks you about yourself, don't you dare whisper. When they ask you to raise your hand, don't you dare half raise it. When they ask you something good about you, you scream it with all you have. Come on now, get up, get up. Tell me who you are. Show me, show me who you are. My greatest truth of all, that not everyone has to remain lost. This, this world is changing more and more every day, and we've decided to change right along with it. My name is Dr. Lauren Michaels Harris, and I'm the president of Trajectory TV Network. At Trajectory, our vision is to provide a comfortable, a creative platform for top content creators and storytellers from around the globe. We're also dedicated to providing this world with content that is healing, educational, empowering, exciting, and above all else, entertaining and transparent. So right now, I invite all of you who believe yourselves to be global game changers to use the link found here and simply take a chance. Schedule a virtual chat where you'll have the opportunity to share your vision for your very own global television show with me, the network president. So use that link and together, let's begin changing and healing this world one story at a time. And remember, whether you have years of experience in front of the camera or zero experience, it doesn't matter. What matters the most is your desire to share great content through television and a willingness to share it with passion and with purpose. 
You might ask, how do I know if I've fallen in love with my purpose and my purpose has fallen in love with me? It's easy when you've lost your voice because you just can't stop talking about it. I'll see you soon. Yes, it is. Oh, wait a minute. It just pulled in. We're here. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to today's installment of Bad Throw Moments. I'm your host, Lauren Michaels Harris. And I am so thrilled to be here. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Well, maybe Fiji. One exception. But outside of Fiji, I wouldn't want to be anywhere but right here with you. Why? Why indeed? I'll tell you why. Because the fact that we are here together fulfills one of the greatest promises available, that one that guarantees us that where two or more of us comes together with that mindset, that heart set, that spirit of togetherness in agreement, spiritual magic ensues. Can I get an amen? That's right. That's the bell of purpose. I, it has been here on this show all six years, and it's going to stay here if I have anything to say about it. Why? No, not because it's a clever gimmick or a show prop. It is, in my opinion, an opportunity, a reminder, if you will, that just like that bell, when it rings, it has a, a it has a ring to it. Well, guess what? So does the truth. And so when some truth is out here on the floor, running back and forth, and I know you flat iron and hair making oatmeal for the baby, you know, I don't want you to be so distracted that you miss the truth. Can I get another one? Amen. That's right. So listen, welcome to today's installment. Um, the first day of March. How nice is that? January, March. Ooh, first day of the third of uh, the last month, the third month of the first quarter. Mm, what about your intentions? You know you set them. Now, be honest. Where are they? Mm, right. Remember when you used to hear old people say, oh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I couldn't figure that out. I was like, what are they talking about? Well, that means I must not need to be good. Mm -mm. The road isn't just, it's not just intentions that are strewn on that road. It's the bows and the arrows, but mainly the corpses of those who left work unfinished. They pulled back the bow. They put it inside the, the arrow, but they never let it fly. A lot of people said intentions. Very few will send them. Think about that today, won't you? Thank you so much. So listen, couple announcements. We have a great show for you. Absolutely. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, Mr. James Howard is here. And we did a lot of promoing for it. I know you saw it. I know you guys at home watching on your big screen TVs. Share this out right now. Uh, quickly, I wanted to say, uh, uh, give a nice reminder out. Uh, we still have room for a couple more of you. We're up to 20. We can take up to 25 with us when we head to Romania, May 4th through the 12th. It is the Legacy of Hope Tour, uh, the Power of We Symposium, my nonprofit. You know, uh, we love kids and we love pouring into them. Good morning. And we love uh, 
having them pour into us. That's the truth about it. So the Legacy of Hope Tour, if you'd like to join us in Romania, reach out to me. It's on all of my socials, and it will give you all of the details. Just to recap, this past weekend, I was in Miami with a group of my coaching clients. It was a fantastic just a blessed and anointed weekend. The business mindset mastery awakened the abundant master within. It was absolute um, magic. It was it was so 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 wonderful. So anyway, thank you to all of you who supported us and those who came and spoke in person. Uh, we had people that flew in all the way from Peru for that weekend, and God was uh, on top of it as always. Can I get any man? So, um, oh. Man, I'm slipping. Man, okay, it's never about just one thing. So, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. He just keeps this stuff interesting. So I should have had James Howard's bio pulled up. I'm still catching up on sleep, y'all, from two weekends on the road. On the road. Uh, so I'm going to do like my little nephews and nieces tell me. I can show you better than I can tell you, Uncle Lauren. A little smart mouth, right? Um... I'm going to start right now before I bring, I'm going to just bring him in uh, while this is playing. Uh, but James Howard is a historian, um, 300, probably more than that by now. Depends on how often he updates his bio. I remember that number though, because I went, what in the world? How in the world? We're going to find out how indeed. 300 um, patents. Right? I don't have any. Overachieve much, Mr. Howard. Anyway, I'm just kidding. We're going to learn a lot today, you guys. But first, yesterday I was going to play this because it was the last day of Black History Month. I said, I'm going to make every month Black History Month. That's what I'm going to start doing. So I'll play something every month. So here's the first clip for the month of March. Um, just because. Now watch this. Oh, wait. A month to recognize Black Americans and educate ourselves on their achievements. This year, Medline's Black Employee Network seeks to spread new knowledge about the contributions of Black scientists. Benjamin Banneker was a free Black astronomer and farmer. As a young farmer, he hand-carved a mechanical clock using a pocket watch and his ingenuity as his guide. He studied lunar tables and wrote a commercially successful series of almanacs. In 1791, Banneker became famous for making astronomical observations and completing land surveys that set the boundaries of Washington, D.C. Today, parks and schools across the U.S. honor Benjamin Banneker. Elijah McCoy's parents, former slaves, sent him to school in Scotland, where he apprenticed as a mechanical engineer. He returned to Michigan as a fireman, oiling train parts. He found the work boring. In 1872, McCoy invented an automatic oiling cup so trains could run for long stretches without maintenance stops. His patented device was quickly adopted and quickly copied, but because his device had the best reputation, engineers began asking for the real McCoy. Oh my God. Elijah McCoy received 26 more patents in his lifetime. Today, in Ypsilanti, Michigan, you can see the marker for his first machine shop. Born in Chelsea, Massachusetts, to parents who escaped slavery, Louis Latimer taught himself mechanical drawing and worked as a draftsman in a patent law office. Latimer invented an evaporative air conditioner, an improved way to make carbon filaments for light bulbs, and a better toilet system for railroad cars. He also made patent drawings for Alexander Graham Bell's telephone and helped Thomas Edison by serving as an expert witness in electric light patent litigation. Today, you can visit his landmark home in Queens, New York to see his achievements. As a teen, Garrett Morgan repaired sewing machines in Cleveland. While making a lubricant for machine needles, he found that the oil straightened hair and started the G.A. Morgan Hair Refining All Company. Right. In 1914, he patented a gas mask to protect wearers from smoke and ammonia. Two years later, Morgan rescued workers trapped in a tunnel using his mask. After seeing an intersection car crash in 1922, he gained a patent for a three-way warning traffic signal. Today, the gas mask and the three-way signal are known as Garrett Morgan's enduring patented innovations. Henrietta Bradbury, a high school educated homemaker from Chicago, invented two very different patented ideas. In May, 1943, she patented a bed rack air freshener for worn clothing. 
in 1945, reportedly inspired by patriotism during World War II. Mrs. Bradbury designed a novel waterproof way to fire torpedoes underwater from either undersea installations or submarines. Mae Jemison is a chemical engineer, physician, and former NASA astronaut. She became the first black woman to travel into space on the space shuttle Endeavor in 1992. Born in Alabama and raised in Chicago, she graduated from Stanford University, also earning her medical degree from Cornell University. In 1993, Jemison founded a technology research company that considers the socio-cultural impact of technological advancements and design. Jemison has been inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame and the International Space Hall of Fame. Stuck. Help me welcome our guest today. Uh, he'll be in one of those videos. You'll see. Here he comes, you guys. Put your hearts on the screen. It's our way of rolling out the virtual red carpet, a standing ovation, if you will. Bless in the manner you wish to be blessed. Here he comes, James Howard. <laughs> I always got to put my little two cents in. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Harris. How are you, brother? Oh, I'm excited. That's the All best right. way I can put it. Man, what what did you feel? I know that these are probably like, you know, everyday names to you, people that you pass or feel like you've known um, because of the work you do. Tell everybody, I'm going to step out for a second. I like to give the guests, especially when I forget to pull up their bio. Um, uh, a chance to have some one-on-one -on -one with the audience just to create your own synergy together. And then I'll pop back in. So um, just start, give us the backstory, a little origin story about James Howard, including little James, little JJ. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll pop back in and we'll get started. How's that sound? No problem. No problem. All you. Well, well to begin with, I'd like to say that measure for measure, it is no better pleasure than to spend this 1st of March with your delightful audience. I'm James Howard. I'm a lifelong academician of 28 plus years in the classroom. But I find myself today being a servant, a servant of people's needs, particularly the underserved community, the African-American community and people of color, and a servant of providing information through history, right? that informs and also provides a roadmap for success. So right now, I am just a brother who is all about service, all about optimism. And I want to just make note of something. Dr. Harris had mentioned 300 inventions. I want to redirect that. I have designed over 400 products in my lifetime, but I have about 20, 21 actual patented inventions. Mm. And uh, yeah, and it's just been a storied career. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I own and run a school, a private career school called Entrepreneurial U, which utilizes design thinking and teaches long-term unemployed adults, uh, job skills, new job skills, and how to discover new career pathways. Uh, I also am the executive director of the Black Inventors Hall of Fame. And uh, that breaks off into two particular entities, Black Inventors Hall of Fame Films and Black Inventors Hall of Fame Museum and STEAM Learning Center. <laughs> wow. So in other words, you're just lazy. Yeah, yeah, man. I, yeah, I'm like, it's like, my goodness. Okay, well, um, <laughs> let me see. Oh, yeah, I have a TV show. How's that for a resume? If, man. I listen, I want to get started. Um, okay, and thank you for uh straightening out my wrong numbers or mis mis misinterpretations, if you will. But let me ask you something. When people ask you what you do, mm -hmm. how do you answer? That's a really loaded question. Um, I think for the most part, I, I simply let them know about my philosophy. And what I do is I'm one who likes to practice what they preach. I have a philosophy called perpetual optimism. And perpetual optimism is one in which 
you know, your entire journey is not about you. It's not about yourself, but it's about serving others. Yeah. So when you run into difficulties, when you run into problems, when you run into obstacles, you don't make those issues about you. Right. You need to overcome them because you have a better good to serve. And that is the needs of others. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's always, always someone in need. Right. And because there's always someone in need and then you derive your fulfillment from serving others, yeah. it's very easy to practice perpetual optimism. So that's what I tell people. I'm a perpetual optimist. I'm glad I went to the health club this morning and did arms because I'm going to need this one as much as I'm going to be ringing the bell. That is uh, true, 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 real talk. Let me ask you this one. Because I, I trust your opinion. And I don't just run any old question past any old body. I'm very, in a good way, skeptical where I seek something that I want to really know the truth to, if that makes any sense, outside of me just researching through books and Googling. Mm -hmm. But people, their opinion, because that has a lot to do with stuff too. What about this? What's going through your mind, um, James, as you hear about all these banned books about black achievers and i saw something during black history month on linkedin about they are trying to ban all these book books you i was like why you know can you talk just a little bit about that because books contain stories about all a lot of these people that i didn't know about in that clip what's going on well what is going on is just how when you plant a seed <clears throat> that seeds begin to sprout its roots underneath before it actually goes above the soil. Yeah. And what we are seeing now is an eruption of, of those seeds breaking the soil and people and folks making it very obvious that they do not want to see our illustrious history, particularly from the innovative side, right? You gotta understand, for over 400 years, we have been innovating in this country, okay? And one the birth of sequestered knowledge, sequestered accomplishments by way of every single thing this man has ever done has been maligned and questioned and challenged from his designing of the first mechanical striking clock, right, to his contributions to the farmer's almanac, right, to whether or not he even had anything to do with the assistance in the surveying of the town of Washington. Benjamin Banneker, even to this day yeah. by pundits and scholars, right, has been maligned. Now, why is that important? Because of the intellectual prowess that he represents. See, he represents all of our ingenuity, right, from day one. And by challenging it, it is just given an indication what, of what has eventually erupted today, particularly down in Florida, right, with the banning of these books and so forth and so forth. OK, so the notion of the black African-American man and woman, right, advancing into today's society, right, is one that cannot be disputed because it's been in our DNA from day one. So what do I think of it? I think it's a bunch of poppycock because you cannot hold back the truth. Mm. And our illustrious, our illustrious history of innovation in this country is so steep that you'd be foolhardy to even try to sequester it. But I'm here to tell you and your audience today, sequester it no more. Right. And little off topic, but I got to put it out there so you don't try to sue me or anything. I'm telling you right here in front of everybody. Poppycock, I'll be using that next week somewhere. I was like, oh my goodness, he didn't bring the poppycock. I am going to use that one. Trust me. Now, here's what I, I, mean, I see questions. I don't come up, you know, some shows they send you questions and this and mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I like a conversation. So I'm being organic with it because I'm getting, I'm kind of, I got upset during Black History Month when I saw a clip, one of the ones I showed here on the show, where they mm -hmm. featured the um, Black people that contributed to the building of Washington, D.C. Yes. How most of it, even to the thing on top of the Capitol. 
and the, yes. that that statue thing and how about how it stood and what it took to get it to fit right and all yeah. these things and i remembered and i was in foster care i had 22 homes and i remember the first thing i ever did that felt like a normal kid was when in sixth grade we went to the capitol mm -hmm. and i'm sitting there going now i know because i remember everything about that day all of it and i don't remember them saying one word about any of these black people, especially what was the main guy's name? The one who did, is that Benjamin or no? Who created uh, those, all those statues and stuff? Well, there are uh, quite a few um, sculptors and, and architects sculptors. and artists who have contributed to that, but Banneker is the most noted no, yeah, for having That's... assisted in the surveying of the town of Washington. And let me explain to you why it's important to understand and start the discussion at Banneker because during Banneker's reign, our forefathers at that time had taken on the belief that African-Americans were intellectually inferior mm -hmm. to that of whites, okay? From George Washington to Thomas Jefferson and a bunch of those forefathers had adopted that belief and espoused it. And it wasn't until Andrew Ellicott, the town surveyor, okay? to the entire country, but specifically for that mission right there in Washington. It was Andrew Ellicott had had an opportunity to work directly with Banneker on, in fact, surveying of the square in the Washington area. And upon working closely with Banneker, he came across this conclusion that this whole notion of intellectual inferiority, right, is again, not warranted, it's disproven, and he simply was not supporting it, right? So mm -hmm. what he did, he went on record, all right, to say just how impressed he was with working with this highly intellectual individual, that of Benjamin Banneker. And so Banneker sort of represents our entire arc of innovation, which to this day, again, continues to be questioned and malign. So it's no surprise to me that you have what you get today with all of our stories being either challenged, all of our stories being oppressed, all of our stories being sequestered. It's no surprise at all because what is happening now is on a daily basis. Just yesterday, we learned about Dr. Gilmore, who was the lady, Gilmer rather, who had uh, the first African American black woman, right? to get her work published in the Library of Congress for mathematicians, okay? Oh, but yeah. she follows a lineage, right? That had already been established from the likes of Katherine Johnson, who got us to the moon and back, and the likes of Gladys West, who got us from point A to point B and back, right? So we have such a rich, illustrious history in, related to, in relations to innovation. And this, Dr. Harris, is exactly why I feel the need, right, to adopt my passion project, my legacy project, and mm. that is the development of the Black Inventors Hall of Fame Museum and STEAM Learning Center. Yes. It, it will be the first museum in this entire country dedicated exclusively to immortalizing the pioneering genius of African-American men and women over the past 400 years. Wow. I'm just, oh, seriously. And I'm really excited. The little boy in me was clapping. I'm telling you why. Because this museum will be something for everybody. Oh, yeah. For everybody. And I mean, I feel like I'll have a chance to catch up, if that makes any sense. Oh, I left my headphones on from the gym. Sorry about that, y'all. Now, you know, I've got to ask this question because somebody might think that's sure is a dumb question, Lauren, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Have you read or learned anything about from a black perspective back when, let's go to any one of those eras, right, where these it was being suppressed, but go to a different genre, i.e. dancing and singing. And people of, uh, of color during those same uh, uh, seasons, if you will, were elevated because of the, was that, 
you know, we're like, oh, look, you know, and we give it that. But I would imagine that the 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 mathematicians and the the engineers and all the people who were getting zero credit, what, wondering how they would feel when they'd see, you know, I mean, not to take anything from the singer or the dancer or the entertainer, but mm -hmm. wondering mm -hmm. why is that any more relevant than what I'm doing to change this world? Precisely. Well, you know, the um, our experience, even in jazz, right, mm. was at one point in time questioned whether or not African-Americans contributed as much to the origin of jazz, right? Even that was questioned at one time. Fortunately, we were able to advance that narrative to the point where that just simply could not be disputed, right? Mm. And then when we began to show, particularly with the advent of Jesse Owens, um, when he went there and embarrassed Hitler in the Olympics and so forth, yep. we began to become showcased with our sports prowess, right? So we have always carried the legacy of music, and we have always been able to carry the legacy of sports, right? And so what has happened in 2000, uh, I believe, nine or seven, when the African American Museum in Washington, D.C., the, uh, opens up and they dedicate over 400,000 square feet to capturing our illustrious history, right? Our illustrious history that includes the civil rights marches, right? Our illustrious history that includes and begins at 1619 and working the fields, right? And literally building this nation on our backs, okay? That entire history was encapsulated in this 400 square feet. 400,000 square foot megatropolis of a building, but yet one aspect was overlooked. And that is the aspect of our invention history, right? Mm. Our inventor history. And as a result, I'm delighted to let your audience know that on March 10th, I will be going down to Washington, DC, along with my two boards, my executive board and my museum planning board. And we will be walking that museum along with the director, Kevin Young, right, on a two-hour tour and discussion about working together. Dr. Harris, oh. our experience and our history as innovators in this country isn't just a story that needs to be told. It is a story of absolute superlative, you know, any word you want to use, exemplary, premier, pioneering, we're at the very top of that. And it didn't just begin with Banneker. It actually began with a brother by the name of Onesimus 400 years ago. Wow. When Onesimus came to these shores in 1702, this is an empathetic slave, right? Who risked freedom and his life just to save the town of Boston from the ravages of smallpox. And he introduced to the town an inoculation process that literally did just that, that proved to be 98% effective. And over the arc of history, the town doctor, Zabdiel Boyston, was given credit for this discovery. And he would write papers, right, in the medical journals. And those medical journals would extend all the way to England and all over the world. And 70 years later, Upon reading about Onesimus and many writings on Onesimus by both Onesimus Master, Cotton Mather, and Zabdiel Boyston, a gentleman by the name of Edward Jenner out of England would get the first patent on vaccines. But it's pretty much the same script as what Onesimus had planned. Right, right. I've so, heard so many. So right. there you are. So what happens is Onesimus is literally the father of modern day vaccines. And that was 400 years ago. He introduced this inoculation process in 1721. And again, proven very effective. And I'm delighted to say that I'm actually writing a movie right now, a script on Onesimus. Did you say movie? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I did my first movie last year, right? You know what, I think I recall you sending that to me uh, yeah. in an email exchange. That's yeah. That's amazing. Not, not a shameless plug, but I'm just saying if you, you know, you know, 
We can yeah. talk. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, listen, we're going to take a short break, but I want to drop this in for everyone, not just Mr. Howard to consider, but all of us. I'm curious because, you know, it's easy for us to point fingers as to who the culprits are when our stories get lost. But for those of you out there of color, think about this. And we talked about this briefly pre-show. How can we ask someone to keep our stories alive when within our own family family dynamics, we're not doing it? We're not we're not sharing the stories that keep the pulse beating of what because what may not seem like anything today down the road could prove to be everything that and more when we return now is a great time to share the broadcast out we'll be right back don't you dare go away you can navigate the legal and emotional journey of divorce and exit a marriage the way you entered it with mindfulness love and respect Solace Divorce Mediation is a full-service law practice helping couples focus on the health and well-being of children and their forever co-parenting family. Our streamlined divorce journey offers flat fees with an estimated completion time frame of two to four months. If you or a friend need us, visit SolaceDivorce.com. Welcome back to today's installment of Bathroom Moments. I'm your host, Laura Michaels Harrison. Before we get Mr. Howard back in here to continue this riveting conversation, wanted to remind you of a choice that I made about two years ago that leveled up so much in my journey. This, I ditched the Diet Coke and literally picked up a V8. Who knew that two years later, well, actually a year later, this would be happening. Listen, what I say about that is anything that serves you should stay. But all those things that do not, they must go. So make a choice. Level up. Decisions are decisions, but it is choices that drive the goal towards the decision. And with this decision, you get 60 calories in every one of these little babies, 100% vegetable juice from concentrate, two and a half full servings of vegetables in every little can. Easy to find. Head down the juice aisle at your local grocer. And when you check out, tell them Lauren sent you. They might look at you like you're crazy, but who cares? V8, get yours today. Here he comes. Welcome back. Welcome back. So... We talked about several different shades of what is going on with the historical aspect of our history as black people. So one thing that I never get to talk to people about, or you don't hear much uh, murmuring, many murmurings about is keeping how important it is to keep our family stories, our historical legacies alive within the family unit. Can you talk a little bit about that? And why is that seemingly a dying breed? I believe it is a dying breed because in some respects, we have bought into the narrative. We really have. We bought into the narrative that we are best at sports and we're best at music, right? But the truth of the matter is we are a very large community. 
And years back, when we had our grandparents and we had the family structure where we had the little black box called a TV that sat in the living room and the rocking chair that sat there, we were more connected as a community. And these stories could be passed down. And those stories emanated and rooted from the South, right, where grandpa and grandma sat on the porch on a straw wicker, you know, chair and shared those stories to the little barefoot, right? Yeah. Nappy head kids, they are. But we live. and so today's youth, rather than spend all of that time on this and on their iPhones and in Twitter, you know, wanting to get yeah. a 30 second bout of information, put all of that aside, step back, and listen to your mom, listen to your grandma actively seek and be curious. I am able to design over 400 products in my life and achieve everything that I have achieved because I had an insatiable appetite to simply ask questions. So my advice mm. to family members out there, mentor kids, even if they're not your own kids, put them aside and become a mentor. Every yeah. single show I ever do, I offer myself up for mentoring. Right. This show is going to expose my contact information. And I challenge anyone out there in the audience to reach me, ask me to be a mentor, particularly the youth. Right. Because we're doing yeah. it. For them. So I believe it's very important to just continue that lineage because it's been there. The roadmap has been set. And if I can just include one other person who literally provided that roadmap for us, and that is Henry Baker. Henry the most Baker. prolific black patent examiner that we have ever had in this country. Henry Baker saw that the key, right, to helping to uplift an oppressed community, right, could rest in exposing our innovative nature. So what did he do? He set out to accumulate all the patents of past black inventors. Now, unfortunately, slaves were not able to obtain patents, right? Because they were not considered citizens in this country. So for years, Henry Baker would start accumulating. He would write letters out across the country because of his position to find out who the patent owners are who happen to be black, right? And you showed many of the people who were in that initial list from the Lewis Latimers, right? To Elijah J. McCoys and many, many, many others. And this list grew eventually from 100 to 800. So there's our roadmap, right? Here's an example again of where we're able to show just how brilliant we are and how important we have been to the establishment and the advancement of this country by simply exposing. So you can now have access to Henry Baker's right original list. I was just interviewed by the Wall Street Journal uh, just last week on this very subject. Wow. You have access to, you know, this list and you can just know that these stories is important to tell more than just 30 28 days, okay, sometimes 27 days of the year in February. Our right. story is much larger than that. We're broad, we're diverse, and it's very important that we get these stories out. I agree cuz I'll tell you something. Thanks. You know, I believe in in legacy. And I don't manifest for next week or next year. I manifest for hundreds of years from now. That's just how it is. Seriously, uh, kids in my family get it because they're like, they come down here and they see those robes, for instance, from every year. And uh, I heard them down here one time. They know I was back there by the washing machines. And they're like, you better not touch them. I was, and what I'm saying, why? <laughs> they said, because they're going to be in the museum one day. And they said, well, that's when I can't touch them because they'll be behind glass. But I can touch them now. And I, it poured through me that, you know, so I want to know this. I want to say that to say this. Um, even like recipes and things mm -hmm. that get lost mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. lost forever. Mm -hmm. We really, and you would think, James, that now with all of the ways to capture data, the cloud yeah. and this yeah. and the other, that it would be easier than ever in history, but it seems the opposite. It just doesn't compute for me. 
And let why? me explain to you why. I'll give you a, a, a clear answer. My mom, God bless her soul, she lived to be about 84, 85, right? Up until her death, my mom was the king of information in the, in the family. Oh, she could remember us from back in the 60s, right? Yeah. And she had that little change purse that so she would always pull out of her breast pocket there, right? And it was an ever, never ending change purse. No matter what your need is, whether you wanted a five cent lollipop or a one cent sandwich cookie, mom always has something for you. And then prior to giving you that coin, she would always pass on some wisdom and some logic to mm. you. So we need to go back, right, to boots on the ground, fundamental, simple communications. And true or not, as you may note, we can rely upon technology, but it has to start with old-fashioned storytelling. So yeah. latch on to your uh, your oldest auntie. Latch on to the, the the oldest in the family and just ask those questions. This is my admonishment to every single youth who may be looking at this particular show right now. Ask questions. Ask about your grandfather. He may very well have been a sharecropper. Ask about your great-great-grandfather, right? Look into your family history, and what you're going to find is that you're going to be uplifted by it. This is why I admire the, the work of Brother Louis Gates, right, who always shows us the connections to our past. And that's an illustrious past that we should be absolutely proud of. I agree. I agree. You know, just last evening, my niece Selma was here. And she's an acupuncture doctor. And she was like, well, I'm about to go over to Africa. And she'll be mm -hmm. in Africa when I'm in Romania. We'll be gone the same time. Mm -hmm. And we started talking about the, you know, member Alex Haley and, and Roots. And oh, I remember yeah. meeting him. I was oh, in a foster home that actually took me to a place called Oakwood College in Huntsville, mm -hmm. Alabama, now Oakwood University, where I met mm -hmm. Alex Haley. And we got the big old, that book was so big, right? Wow. But there was a big surge then about people mm -hmm. visiting and looking or seeking their roots and this and the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But why has there never been, in your opinion, the same kind of drive to visit the places your family came from once they got here? You know, we, where the slaves were in your family mm -hmm. and, and yeah. you know, the migration, we know it's like there's a big gap. Like when I found my birth family at 32, they took mm -hmm. me to Arkansas. Mm -hmm. and so graves and stuff of people mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there was no history no one and i was you know trying to not push it because you know glad to get what i can get sure. no one knew anything before arkansas yes yes well what has happened is we become complacent right and much to the credit of our grandparents right they faced, and the, and the parents, they faced the struggle, right? Civil, the civil rights struggle was very real, sure. right? Okay. The whole notion of just advancing as a colored people, right? And, and, and getting justice on these lands was very real. So because of that struggle, right? That helped to, to bury a lot of our past, right? Where we were just conscious of trying to improve ourselves and improve our lives, right? But now, Right. In an attempt to level the playing field, in an attempt to apply diversity, equity and inclusion across the board in every single walk of life. Right. From technology to sports to coaching, you name it. We as a community need to realize that much can be learned and gained from studying our past. So we need to I be agree. active. We literally need to be active. And looking to the past to inspire the future. And that's Amen. basically the mantra of the um, Black Inventors Hall of Fame. We Amen. look to the past to inspire the future. You know what I would like to see? Really? And now that I'm in television and stuff, you notice my network, mm -hmm. right? You notice my mm -hmm. network, right? Okay. So anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. Who knew? I never knew I'd own a television network and a magazine. Never. But now that's that to be commended, it, brother. Thank you know, you. that really is. I tell people all the time, I say, I had the show, then I got a network, then I got a magazine. All I need is a good friend named Gail. Uh, uh, I get uh, it? Yeah. <laughs> See, you got, got it. it. Yeah, got it. yeah. Listen, 
what about this? Let's talk. Let's switch over to like you talked about the movie and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, I wonder, you know, it's such a big deal. Still, people go when they see on soap operas. Oh, they got black people. They got black storyline. Boom, boom, boom. Do you think we'll ever see shows or movies? Movies. I'd love to see movies that talk about that take us back to when like people. I'm curious about things like this. Go back to the 1800s or the 1700s when the black people that were contributing in a big, big way from here, from here, what it must, what colors came with it. You better not rock the boat, N word. Um, you know, and they probably thought, I have to keep my mouth shut. I've got to yeah. walk the straight line so that this can continue to open yes. and pave the way for those in front yes. of me. But yes. they had to take yeah. a whole, I bet they had to endure all kinds of restrictive things that they had to fight because I want to tell you what I really feel. If I can only talk, can you, what have you found in your, 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 your research about how in their journals, what they were feeling, how tough mm -hmm. was it really? I think there's things that none of us could ever imagine. Let me give you a few examples. I'm going to point to one that you showed in your montage, Elijah J. McCoy which mentioned that he studied in Scotland, right? As yeah. a master engineer, but had to come over here and accept what his parents would consider a lowly position as a fireman, right? This brother was empathetic in spite of him being oppressed and told we simply don't hire black engineers. He set up for the fireman job, but yet at the same time was inspired enough to help to save that industry. He propelled the railroad industry with the invention of his lubricating cup. And this man knocked on multiple doors trying to get people to buy that product. They all told him no, but yet they knocked it off anyway, right? So this is what you have to endure. And he eventually had to open up his own manufacturing company, the Elijah J. McCoy Manufacturing Company, Real to sell his own lubricating cup. And that is where that expression People in the know would, in fact, ask, as your montage indicated, hey, is this the real McCoy? Because this product was so much more uh, superior. Then the but other. best case example lies in uh, Ellen Eglin, a domestic Washington servant who in 1821, I'm sorry, 1881, designed and patented a clothes wringer a clothes wringer that revolutionized the laundry industry. If you can just wrap your head around that, right? The laundry industry, which is essentially just a bucket with hot water, right? And a right. scrub board. But she revolutionized the laundry industry by designing this mechanical clothes wringer. And when Ellen Eglin sold that mechanical clothes wringer for just $18 and did not receive any franchise from it, and when asked years later why she sold her invention for so little money, this was her reply. You know that I am colored. And white women would not buy a product that was designed and patented by a color woman. That is why I sold it for so little, right? So this is what our forefathers and foremothers had to endure, sure. right? This whole notion that we were not intellectually capable, that we were not of the mindset to do things that advance a cause and advance the nature. And unfortunately, that mindset has seeped even into our youngins today. I tell of a story, Dr. Harris, where my good friend, Lonnie Johnson, Dr. Lonnie Johnson, the inventor of the super soaker, right? Oh, he's on my list. Billions, which is aerospace so engineer for NASA. Indeed, man. That's the important thing to know. He's an engineer, aerospace engineer. This brother has over 120 patents, and he is doing something right now that is going to revolutionize the better industry. All right. I'm privy to that amount of information. But Dr. Johnson tells of a story in my film, The Gathering, Black Inventors uh, Gag Game. He tells of a story where a little kid, he's visiting a friend who had asked him to come to the class and speak to the kids about his invention, the super soaker. And a little black kid is sitting there in the classroom and after Dr. Johnson tells him he's the inventor, the kid looked at him and said, you, you, didn't, you didn't invent that. You didn't invent that. 
some some white guy over in the corner invented that product, right? Yeah. So that's what we have to deal with right now, right? This has this consciousness of 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 an unawareness. It's not a consciousness. It's a lack of consciousness of an awareness of just how great and prolific we have been as innovators, right? This is what has propelled me on my single mission to design the country's first museum. Again, dedicated to telling those stories. I love there it. you are. That's one good example of what you're uh, talking about. Oh, my goodness. And real quick, dang, we're almost out of time. I got to ask you, because I know you know the insights. I can just see you sitting there talking to somebody from the family. Okay. <laughs> The when the wasn't it McCoy, if not correct me, you know, with the cup and all the oil mm -hmm. thing, but didn't mm -hmm. in that where it took it and turned into some hair grease? What mm. were they talking about? How in the world? How that? Oh, let me see. I bet I could. Oh, look at here. You, you gotta understand, brother. We're large, man. We're not limited to one thing. Look at Lonnie Johnson. Close to three billion dollars sold in the combined products he's done from the super soaker to the Nerf gun, right? And then look at 140 other patents. People don't even know that. We are super large. One of our most prolific inventors, McCoy and Granville T. Woods. Granville T. Woods has over 60 patents. Uh, George Washington Carver only has seven patents on record, but this man's genius allowed for the invention and the discovery of more than 300 uses, practical uses for the lagoon, the peanut. And know everyone, he did not invent peanut butter. Hey, okay. Butter. But the truth of the matter is, brother, we are just a large community, and it is very important for us to expose that largeness. And if I have my way come the fall of 2025, your viewers are going to be able to visit the city of Newark, New Jersey, and come to a place that will serve as the repository of information of our illustrious innovative history. From well, Nesimus all the way to Dr. Nicole Hedalia Green, who is presently doing research on cancer technology, applying nanotechnology, and has a patent on it that she attained in 2021. So from Onesimus to Dr. Nicole Hedalia Green, we will get our story told. I can't wait. And I know I <laughs> and a lot of those out there watching want to do whatever we can to support, pour into, and just um, help manifest this, this absolute need. I'm so encouraged. I really am from a person who never thought I would know my own history, but finding it made me want to know even more because it's not complete until we know all of the history. Um, so I'm just so grateful for you and your work. What an honor to have you here. Um, and I truly, truly mean that. Listen, you all, um, this is just, we have barely cracked the shell on this. If you'd like to continue the dialogue with James Howard, and I encourage you to do so, scrolling along the bottom of your screen right now is just one of the two ways. Here is another, and we will take the liberty of dropping both of these links inside your comment section at the conclusion today so that you have easy access. Now, providing you something is only part one of it. You must continue and do your part by picking it up and doing something with it. Don't let this opportunity end up in one of your proverbial junk drawers of life. Keep it out where you can pass it. Make it matter so that it can become something that matters to the world. So I just want to encourage everybody for that. And again, thank you. If you could leave with a Jerry Springer moment for the audience. The one thing I always, I love this way, is if somebody was to forget everything you said here today, except one sentence, what mm -hmm. sentence would you hope it would be that they take forward from this today? As I think back, that one expression, that one mantra, I want to encourage everyone to look to their paths to encourage their future. Ooh. Uh oh, uh oh, got some uh, chills up in here. Y'all know uh, what that means. Listen, couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much. I've got to get you back and we got to do more um, together. Uh, stay backstage for just a second. I promise I'll be right there. And, um, We'll take it from there. I want to thank you so much again and thank all of you for being everything I needed in this moment 
to be my very best in this moment. Listen, get out there today. Be the blessing, the change you'd like to see in this world, in your journey. And consider meeting me on the front porch again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Central, where together we create history through storytelling. I'm Lauren Michaels Harris, and I love you. And remember, there's not a damn thing you can do about it. I'll see you tomorrow. So <laughs>